This was the canoe as found. Um, we're assuming that it was washed up from the hurricane or washed into the river from the hurricane. Could have come local. Could have come from another state. We had 140 mile an hour winds and this thing weighs like nothing. So uh, since it had no value and no numbers, we, we claimed it. My son found a boat after the hurricane. It was in the river, just barely at the surface. Um, it's got some issues. It's got a little crack here. And it's got a little crack here. And, but there's another crack here. And there's another crack here. There's another crack here. And another crack here. And I think there's a crack on the other side. There's a hole here. And there's a crack here. And there's a hole here. And there's a crack here and a crack here and a hole here and it's got a terrible hog the the boat goes in in the middle so is it worth fixing absolutely not am i going to fix it of course i'll try anyway so the boat had these stiffeners that went straight across i've cut them already and i didn't film that but i was just and then basically what it is is they laid a piece of cardboard on the bottom and then they glassed over it and I'm sure it gave it some stiffness but once this was broken through it uh it couldn't hold so what I'm gonna do is cut these out and sand back on both sides and lay something in this old keel like maybe a piece of aluminum conduit or something and totally glass over it and push before I glass over it I'm gonna push the the sag out of the bottom and get it straight so that'll be the first step and then we'll look at patching all these other holes. So I got a lot of grinding to do. I got to grind these surfaces so the epoxy will stick. So it's not pleasant. I get all my old purple shirt on and a dust mask and turn the fan on and uh, have at it. There's no other way to do it unless you just do it. All right, so that was unpleasant, but I got all these little cross members ground down flat. I got the trough ground so glue will stick. And I got it sanded back a couple inches, well, maybe three or four inches on each side. So I'm going to clean it up, and then we are going to um, figure out what I'm going to do with this center line. All right, we're, we're looking right into the sun, so I don't know if you can see this well. Well, let's go to the other end. Okay, I don't know how well you can see this, but I've got the keel absolutely straight. Let me show you how I did it. I put this plastic pipe, it's a half inch electrical conduit, laid it in the bottom and I put a strut and I'm pushing it down and I'm prying against the frame of the, of the um, canoe. And I got it straight, so I'm going to take these off. I'm going to wipe down that bottom with some acetone or some MEK, whatever I have. I probably need to put, I have to put a couple more struts, not to change the shape, but to get the plastic pipe to lay flat in the bottom. And I'm going to glass it in. Um, first step will be to epoxy it in. And then I have a little bit of glass. I can probably put some glass patches on it, but I don't have a roll of glass tape, which is what I want to use. But I'm going to get started. I'm going to uh, take this out, clean it real good, clean the glass real good. Probably wipe down the PVC pipe, but it doesn't really matter if the glass sticks to the pipe. It's The pipe is giving it to shape, and the shape makes it strong. You know, boy, first step's going real quick here. No, no big issues. Just lots of sanding and grinding. Okay, so I've got some blue tape on the bottom here. That's where the holes go all the way through because I don't want to drip epoxy all out. And uh, I'm going to flip it back over now. I've got epoxy down the middle in the crack. And I have rough sanded my... I've rough sanded my piece of conduit. And i got epoxy everywhere besides the crack too. I'm going to set it in there. And uh, push it down. Okay, so we have our PVC conduit down the middle. It is bedded in epoxy. Thick in epoxy. Okay, I lied to you. I did have a little bit of fabric. Enough to cut a square to put over the PVC pipe 
under where the little thickened area is going to go. You can hardly see them, but there's one, two, there's four of them. And I got them epoxied in. And now what I really need to do is leave this alone, go take a nap, and get back on it uh, tomorrow. So it's day two. Um, this epoxy set, it's hard. And I could probably pull out all the struts, but I think what I'll do is leave the struts in there and flip the boat over and do the keel repairs on the bottom where I had put the blue tape and the keel was com is completely bro broken in half. I'm going to go ahead and fix that from the outside while I have all these struts in because I've pushed probably an inch and a half of bow out of the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and repair the keel to make sure it keeps its shape before I knock all these little braces out. <laughs> this little sander is not much of a carpentry tool but if you're going to work fiberglass man you got to have one it's just it just it's a great it's a great tool for fiberglass it's not doesn't have a whole lot of other uses but for working on fiberglass it is the thing okay this is my first patch on this little boat um everything is epoxy no polyester resin and lots of layers of sort of fine um uh, lightweight cloth because of all the little bends and angles and the boat is like incredibly thin I don't know how how they even made these things this thin but it's real thin so I can't put a whole lot of glass on there or I'll have a big lump but I've grinded down the area um, at the top I've grinded down to my thickened epoxy on the inside that I put to hold the plastic pipe and around the circumference I ground as much as I was comfortable to grind so structurally, my two little keel patches on the outside are done. They will need um, fairing, but I'll save that for later. So I'm gonna flip the boat over now and take a look at these ribs and see what I need to do to bring those back to life. These are scraps of some Devenicel foam. It's a marine foam, which means only that it doesn't absorb water and the strong uh, epoxies and other chemicals used on a boat won't dissolve it. So um, I'm gonna use this to replace this part here on all these ribs where I cut it away and instead of going back with the marine cardboard that was there before I'm going to use the foam so right now I'm going to cut them all the same I'm going to clean this extra um, clean it so it will have a good bite and glue them all into place we've got all eight of them ready to go we've got the old glass ground out the way and I got a little brick on each one that will hold them down so I need to take them out and clean with acetone underneath them Put some thickened epoxy underneath them and put them back. And then done for the day because epoxy cures so slow. But it's all good. Okay, not shown. I added a bunch of thickened epoxy uh, around the, um, the pipe just to get a more gradual, gentle curve to get the glass to, you know, to totally white out without having air bubbles under it. And now I've, my, I ordered a roll of six ounce by six inch wide. Uh, tape, um, fiberglass cloth, and I'm brushing it out with epoxy. And this is going real well, no problems. Okay, so the backbone of the boat is all taped up. I probably will double up the tape going uh, sideways or thwart ships because if I don't, I might have a weak spot right there where there's just one layer of glass. But the center part, I'm calling good. Um, it's all an additional to the original boat while everything's wet I'm gonna go ahead and lay some diagonals in these uh, intersections and I'll uh, Glass those down and that will give me a, a, a good joint right here. So I had to cut These pieces won't go over that bump and over that bump at the same time because the threads run in parallel But these will so I'll glass these down and then probably tomorrow. I'll put one more piece on each side and we'll, uh, we'll call the frame good and then I'll just have to work on the 74 holes that are on the outside. All right, yesterday's glass went really well. Um, the only thing left on this bottom part is I want to put one more strip across here because this joint between the new foam and the old cardboard, I just have one layer of glass. I like to have two. Everything else in the middle is finished. Um, today I'm going to spend some unpleasant 
time grinding back all these patches and grinding the green from the cracks that I need to fix like this one and there's many more so a lot of grinding this will get a light sanding but not a grinding so I'm gonna put on the famous purple shirt and uh, my dust mask and my earmuffs and we're gonna start grinding did a pretty heavy-duty grinding with the grinder and the flap disc and removed um, the gel coat around the new cracks and remove the old patch material around the crappy crappily repaired cracks and then I vacuumed and cleaned with acetone and now I see a few more spots I need to get so I'm gonna have to um, vacuum again and clean with acetone again but I want to go ahead and get everything this go around with the grinder so I don't have to do this again so most of the original patches didn't stick well they were probably probably done polyester resin and they probably or I can tell they didn't sand the old paint off because the paints under it so I'm trying to do a good job here I know it's not a work of art but I want it uh, to be usable for the kids okay so the patches on the inside of the boat are cured let's see what I can do about taking some uh, material off the outside this, this boat is so thin I made the inside patches with uh, two layers of glass one semi uh, rigid woven and then the six ounce woven you got to be careful I can make these patches basically indestructible by building them up thick but then they're gonna crack next to the patch where the hole is really thin where the original hole is thin so I'm trying to keep the whole thing semi flexible so it won't have any hard spots in it it's kind of tricky so some of these cracks look like they're like three inches long but when you start grinding you realize they're they're six inches long so I'm trying to remove all of the broken glass fibers and I'm trying to sand down where I can just see my patch on the inside and then allow two or three inches on each side of that to feather out the glass um, again I'm trying to make these patches as flexible as the original hole but um, not compromised with a crack and uh, you know I'm not a, I'm not an um, engineer I'm just trying to get a thin strong patch and that's why I'm using epoxy and not polyester and I'm being real careful with making sure that I'm using the um, cleaning everything and, and getting a good sanding job so I get some good clean glass to work with so this one patch on the side of the boat that I ground out um, wet foam I kind of had a feeling we both had a feeling me and my son because it was floating so low in the water so I drilled a big hole and that's the flotation foam and it's soaking wet if I stick my finger in it water comes out and the same on the other end so I'm gonna have to cut this little bulkhead out and dig out all that foam and replace it um, there's no wonder that it's wet there's a hole up in the top back here on both ends I don't quite get it unless they did the glass and they poured the foam in from that hole and they just never patched it but if you give foam an opportunity it will soak up water and that's exactly what it did so uh, no biggie we're gonna cut that bulkhead out and get that old wet foam out of there okay so we cut out the end it's very thin kind of what we expected and I believe I'm most correct that hole up in the top they just uh, they sealed all the glass and then they just poured the foam in there and it expanded um, I'm not sure how I'm going to replace it, but I do need to cut out this wet foam for starters And I do need to put a patch on the interior of the hull So I can fix this hole which goes through now it goes all the way into the foam Okay, I got the outside sanded well where I need to do all the patching um, I don't know if you can see it, but I've sanded all the way through the original boat glass and this whitish color This is the glass that I added on the inside for this thing sin but I got two problems one I didn't put backing on the inside right here so I sanded through I'm gonna have to get on the inside and put a patch and I didn't put backing on the inside of this one because it was uh, the foam was behind it and I didn't see it so I'm gonna flip it back over and go ahead and patch those two it's kind of cool today probably not the best day for putting epoxy but I'm gonna go ahead and do these two little patches so that when I go to do the outside I can do all of them at one time okay I have warmed up a little bit and I'm ready to put my first patches on the outside 
Um, I'm going to put two layers of cloth, one layer of the heavy, stiff stuff, and one layer of the soft stuff, and let that cure, and then I'm going to block sand it to see, kind of, kind of dial in where I need more layers. Um, everything's kind of lumpy. It's really hard to tell right now. I got all my pieces pre-cut. I got them weighted down because the wind was driving me crazy. So I'm going to mix up some epoxy, warm it up in the microwave a little bit so it'll be nice and thin. And uh, I'll be painting epoxy for the next 30 minutes. Okay, all the exterior patches have at least two layers, a heavy layer and a light layer. And some of them have more. Um, I let the top layer overlap the old gel coat and that'll be sanded off. And that's typically not good um, means and methods because technically speaking, when you sand it flat, the end grain of this cloth will be exposed and the only thing keeping it from the water is just your paint or your coating or your gel coat. Um, typically you want your patch to be reset into the gel coat. But I gave myself a pass because this boat is uh, not going to be in the water all the time and it's so doggone thin. Just uh, you can't hardly do it any other way. So got them all patched. We will uh, block sand them down flat. And there's probably going to be some areas that need a little more cloth and some areas that are going to be good. I'm using a little straight edge here to mark out where I'm low, where I can put another layer of glass. Um, I could just fill it with uh, epoxy filler, but I don't gain much strength like that. So I'm going to add another piece of glass wherever I can. And it was like 50-50, like half of the um, patches were good the way they were, and half of them needed a little bit more glass to build them up. So I'm thinking the sides need some extra bracing. Apparently they were never very strong, and now they're all full of holes. So I don't want to make the canoe heavier because I think that's one of the nice things about it is it's so light. But I'm going to add um, the foam down. <clears throat> I'm going to add foam on two pieces of foam around this build, turn of the bilge or maybe a tad higher, kind of where all the brakes are. And I'm going to epoxy them into place. And I'm going to put one layer of six ounce glass over the top of those. And I'm going to call it good. Um, I don't want to make it real heavy. I'm already adding a little bit of weight in the keel, but not a huge amount. So the trick is to hold these in place while the thickened epoxy sets. So I clamped these boards down the middle so I could have something to strut off of. So this is going to be a cluster. But I'm going to go ahead and start. I did sand the uh, area. I didn't power sand it. I hand sanded it. And I'm going to wipe it down with acetone and then uh, should be ready to go. So I got my foam in and I have it propped against the hull and it took a lot of sticks because the hull's so lumpy it didn't want to stay flat against the hull. And it's kind of following the magic line and uh, on a boat that would be, if you try to go straight, the, bo the boards don't want to lay flat. You got to kind of go in the curve with the hull and it lays flat. So it's on the magic line. I didn't measure anything. I just made them fit pretty good. I've got them uh, marked with a sharpie, so one by one I'll take off all the little sticks that just that just stuck there, and batter the back of the um, the venicel and stick them into place. Uh, I have the hull blocked up because if you let it roll back and forth on the keel, the little sticks fall out because everything twists and moves. But uh, I think I got a good system here. So of course every single stick is a different length and they only fit where they are so um, I just took them off and kind of laid them up top exactly where they needed to be and I applied the thickened um, epoxy resin to the back of the foam and I have uh, the foam marked with a sharpie so I can go right back where it was and it went, went in um, really easy actually. Um, the foam itself is not adding any strength it's just adding, um, how do I say this? It's making the glass have a, two 90 degree surfaces. It's like a piece of paper when it's flat. It has no strength, but when you fold it up, it gets a little stronger. So this foam just helps to uh, fold the fiberglass cloth and resin to 
get it a little bit stronger a lot stronger than if you would just lay it on there flat and put that little bit of angles and a little bit of relief in them and they get um, quite a bit more strength without a whole lot more weight put some thickened epoxy to kind of ease these inside corners thinking I could get a better job of getting the glass down without air bubbles and I just gave it a good hand sanding now I'm gonna vacuum this out wipe it with the uh, acetone and go ahead and roll out the cloth for this one and I got that canoe propped up so I can work downhill and make it less likely I screw it up and then I'm gonna flip the canoe around and get the other side and uh, that'll probably be it for the afternoon all right both sides are glassed and I believe that's the last bit of glass I'm gonna put on the um, boat I've got some filler to put and I gotta fill these uh, holes where the flotation goes but I don't think I'm gonna put any more glass it's kind of a um, Kind of a weird deal if I make one, any one spot too um, strong then when it flexes next to it I'm going to get a crack next to the beefed up spot so I'm trying to not get any one spot that much stronger than original just trying to kind of get the whole thing a little bit stronger um, it probably did fine the, all these damages are probably from when it was not in the water people dropping it fiberglass is kind of brittle but anyway um, Glassing's done, sanding and body filling and flotation is, and painting is all that's left. I just finished a marathon sanding session on the little canoe, uh, 100 grit in the little five inch random orbital. And I got it ready for some more fairing compound. This is the real stuff, it's real easy to use. I've skimmed it once with epoxy fairing compound. Um, <clears throat> well pure epoxy with some thickener in it and I kind of got them close but that's real hard to sand this stuff's real easy to sand and the boat has a bajillion scratches spider cracks etc etc and I'm not going to try to address all these things I, I just want the boat to be structurally sound so the kids can play in it in the river and not worry about sinking or, or falling apart and it's going to be to that stage without all the cosmetic work because it's just not worth it we will fair out my major patches and sand them fairly flush so it won't look that ugly and i will give it a coat of paint which is going to hide a lot of this stuff but the damage is still there but anyway it's kind of a cool little canoe it's coming along so i ended up putting on more of the total fare than i had kind of planned on um went on well and it is uh going to dry and we're going to sand and that may be all I have to do to the outside except for painting but I'm sure when you start sanding you usually find spots that are disagreeable but I'm not after perfection I just want it to be a usable boat for the kids. Well, I tell you what, after messing with that center console, this baby is a dream. Front to back to front and just an hour. And it's done. It's ready for paint. I'm going to, um, I'm not after perfection. Actually, I got it a whole lot better than what I thought I was going to get it. I'm going to prime it and then paint it. And the reason I'm priming it is because I have primer left over that I need to use. And I'm going to paint it with that ugly beige paint that I first started painting my big boat with and changed my mind. And I'm going to use that kind of like a seal coat because I think the kids are going to come with paint brushes and camouflage it all up. So, you know, it's really not going to show. But it's good paint, so it'll act like a good barrier coat, I think. Um, so, turn it over. I'm going to sand the inside. Only good enough to remove the Sharpies. So, like, make sure there's no jagged fiberglass. Then get some flotation back in the ends, and uh, we're going to launch her. Be, she'll be finished. This is expanded polystyrene. Um, 
foam, insulation foam, or also known as XPS, also known as Home Depot pink foam. Um, it is the most water resistant foam, especially compared to um, like all the spray foams, all the pourable foams. This stuff is really, really water resistant and I already had it so you know it's going in there it's a little bit of a pain because the shape up front is so weird but I just uh, took the scrap sheets I had and ripped them into narrow strips and I'm just putting them in there stacking them and and it's gonna be probably 90% because they're fitting fairly well I'm cleaning off the green paint or the green coating I'm not sure what this is actually so that the new um, plate can be stuck on with epoxy and I'll have a clean surface to bind it to and I'm also using a little sander to knock off some of the XPS foam that's sticking out too far um, I got it pushed in there so tight that it pretty much stays put when I um, knock the bumps off with the sander so I got both ends shoved with as much foam as I can get in there um, and I kept the old uh, bulkheads that I cut out as a template but they're kind of wonky so I ended up just taking a, a, a piece of stiff uh, paper from my wife's studio, she doesn't know it, and I just folded it, pushed it in until it creased around the corners and cut it out. So I got a good template, um, front and back, same thing. I'm going to cut new bulkheads out of some old boat flanges. It's a little heavier, well it's heavier than the original but not that much in such a small piece. And I'm just gonna overlap, I'm gonna glue it to the, what's left of the little flange. Instead of trying to make it flush, I'm just gonna put it on top, put some epoxy and strut it, and leave it be for a while. So, get on the purple shirt and start cutting fiberglass. Perfect size. So my green fan that stays outside in the rain all the time, um, it finally just rotted and fell apart so I had to make a new box for it. This time I made it a little more weather um, friendly so it should last probably my lifetime sitting out here in the rain. And when this, um, when I quit doing fiberglass, I'm going to donate this purple shirt to the Smithsonian I think because it's, it's survived an incredible number of years using with the paint and stuff. It's so stiff now that I don't even need a hanger. I can just throw it in the corner and it just stands up. Okay, both the bulkheads are cut to fit, and the back side where the flange is, are, I put the grinder on them to clean off all the old muck. And the front side, the white side, I've hit them with the 100 grit sandpaper so the new paint will stick. And I have a way to clamp them. They're dry right now. Um, both of them are good to go. We're going to mix up some thickened epoxy and stick them on there. And then we're going to turn the boat over, and I'm going to prime the bottom hopefully before the day's out well, I went to get my primer and it was uh, it was dead the hardener was completely hard so it, it went in the garbage and I'm just spraying the <clears throat> paint directly onto the fiberglass um, I'm not gonna have adherence problems because I have the fiberglass roughed up with 100 grit and I promised before that I would never spray paint again because I, I do such a poor job but on this uh, I gave myself a pass on this one because it really doesn't matter it's going to be painted over I just wanted a good seal coat on it Okay, we got a coat of paint on the canoe. Um, from about 20 feet, it looks pretty good. Up close, it don't look so good. But considering it should have been put in the garbage, it looks pretty good. And it's good enough to put some camouflage paint on. So the bottom is finished. Now I'm gonna flip it, I think. Let me see if this stuff's dry. Yeah. So now I'm gonna flip it over and finish the epoxy work on the little two little bulkheads. And then the inside will be ready to paint. I think I'm going to paint it with a brush. So the epoxy that's holding the bulkheads on set enough for me to remove the little um, push sticks holding in place. And now I'm going to add some more thickened epoxy just to make this curve more pleasant. 
um, on both ends. And then tomorrow I'm going to inject foam to fill up the remaining cavity. Um, and then the inside will be ready to paint. The outside has been painted. Yeah, come along. Yesterday I drilled two holes in this top little top cap. One toward this end, one in the middle, and there's already a hole at the end. And I sprayed foam in the first hole until I could see it and in the second hole. And then sprayed the second hole and then put some in the third hole. And it did what foam does. It gets way bigger than you ever think it's going to get. But I'm confident that it, that top area now is all sealed up with foam. So I'm going to clean this up. And it is an absolute gorgeous day. And I'm going to paint the inside of the boat. Okay, this is gray enamel, oil-based paint. Um, they call it primer on a can, but it, to me it just looks like paint. And this is the easiest ever. I am pour a little puddle in the bottom of the boat and I have a thick nap roller and I'm just rolling a good heavy coating and covering up all the different layers of glass and all the different patches and just makes a world of difference. Just, it was so easy and so much improvement. So the top, <clears throat> the top of these little decks up here where all that foam was, it's a sticky mess. And actually I cut the foam off and now it's coming back out of the hole. So I'll skip that. I wanted to paint anyway because it's such a gorgeous day. And this is probably the easiest coat of paint I've ever put on anything at any time. It's just a gray something or other. It's all oil based. This is a gray primer from Ace Hardware. And now I'm going to kind of docker it up. I got some greens and some browns and some blacks and a little bit of red. So I'm going to kind of, uh, I don't know, make it look like the trunk of a car. I don't know what it's called. Kind of splatter paint it, kind of camouflage it. The next color I'm going to use is the green. Inside is done. It might be kind of different, maybe a little ugly, but I tell you what, you can't see the bumps anymore. All of that is gone away, and you won't be able to see dirt in it either. I don't know, my son might not like it. He might paint it all over again, but that's okay. And just sprayed my second coat on the bottom of the, um, the old two part paint that I bought to paint my big boat that didn't like the color. And I equally don't like the color here, but doesn't matter because it's going to get camouflaged most likely. So, the only thing left for me to do is those little decks and clean them up. And then we can go chunk this thing in the river and play with it. So, with the second coat on the bottom, all that was left was to deal with these little ends up here in the spray foam. And I decided to solve this problem by really not doing anything. I took a, a sharp chisel and I carved out all the excess and I put some spray paint on them on both ends um really can't get up in there unless I were to take off the gunnels and this little cap and that that just ain't in the plan so there is a little bit of exposed foam in that front corner about the size of a half dollar but uh the sun can't hit it it's not a gasoline boat so there won't ever be gasoline on it you just can't get to it so I just put some black spray paint on it and for the intended purpose, boat looks pretty good. Need to go throw it in the water and see how it does. <laughs> 